The other day I was researching some antenna designs for some new devices I'm coming out with and I was studying uh, what are called Faraday cages and simply put a Faraday cage is nothing more than a metal enclosure like a metal box that you can put things in and it will shield that device or that whatever's inside that box from outside fields. And so uh, I got to thinking about it in the context of a cell phone and because people are asking me all the time, do EMF protectors work and what about these little screen mesh bags that you can buy that you can put a cell phone in and carry it in your pocket, do they really work? Well, yeah, they really do work. But uh, I got to thinking about it, there's a whole lot cheaper and easier way to create a Faraday cage for your cell phone to keep it from blasting you with EMF during the day. So I want to show you that. So. First, we're going to do a little experiment with my cell phone and with a cordless phone. I've got my cordless office phone here, I've got my cell phone here, it's on. And uh, an EMF meter. This is a tri-field meter. It picks up various kinds of fields, magnetic, electric, radio, and microwave. So we've got it set to pick up radio and microwaves. Because cell phones emit, they transmit and receive microwave radiation, which is not good for you. It interferes with cellular communication, it accelerates brainwave states, it heats tissue, does a lot of negative things to the human body. As more and more evidence is showing, which you can see on our website and our blog. So anyway, I got my cell phone, got the EMF meter, it's on, got my cordless phone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call the cell phone and we're going to see what happens on the EMF meter. When that cell phone goes off, you'll see the microwave field. And I'm going to take this phone away from here just so that it's not picking up the phone. I'll let you see. The phone is dialing. Okay, I'm going to pull it off. So, so immediately, you see that meter. That cell phone is setting the meter off. So I'll hang up. And that meter goes off the charts. It goes all the way off the charts. It goes all the way to the end of the meter and it's still running. Now I've disconnected from the call a few seconds ago. It's still running. It's still popping up and down. It's still communicating with that cell tower before it finally dies off. Okay? So if you're walking around with this thing in your pocket, you're irradiating your testicles, your other bits and pieces if you're female. Not, good, not a good idea. Not a good idea to be blasting your cells and the water in your cells with microwave radiation. Okay? So, we can see running a cell phone creates this field. Now here's the simple, dirt cheap, easy part to create your own Faraday cage. Good old fashioned, simple aluminum foil. Stick your phone in it. Wrap it up like a sandwich. You don't have to do more than one layer. One layer will do just fine. Stick that down next to the uh, EMF meter. Call the cell phone. And we'll see what happens. You can see the phone is ringing. Ringy once, ringy twice, ringy three times, ringy dingy four times, should go to voicemail, nothing's happening. The phone is not picking up, the phone is not registering, the phone is not receiving a signal. I'm going to hang up now. The phone's not picking up a signal, it's not transmitting a signal. So you can see simple, good old fashioned cheap aluminum foil can totally block a cell phone signal. Now the question is, why the hell would you want to do that? <laughs> if you got a cell phone and you need to be in communication people with people, why would you go to the trouble of buying an EMF screen bag or wrapping your cell phone in foil if it's not going to pick up and communicate? Yeah, it'll block the EMF, but you're not going to be able to use your phone, right? Well, here's an even more interesting way of protecting yourself from EMF and you don't have to wrap your phone up in cell phone uh, in, in aluminum foil and you don't have to buy an expensive Faraday cage bag. Here's the amazing trick that you can do to protect yourself from EMF. You see this little button? You press down this little button on your phone. Your phone may be a little different than this one. You hold it down for a second 
And guess what happens? It's going through its cycle. And going through a long cycle. <coughs> this is a smartphone for dumb people. Okay. And guess what happens? It shuts off. Amazing, right? All you got to do to have the same effect of aluminum foil or expensive EMF bags is turn your freaking cell phone off. How simple is that? Doesn't cost anything either. Now, you might say, well, I'm a doctor, I'm a realtor. I've got to use my cell phone. Well, in some situations you may, but I'll tell you for most people what I do. And this is what I do and this is what I recommend is leave your cell phone off when you're not using it. And just turn it on every now and then and check your messages. Check your messages, get your messages, turn your cell phone off. You know, if you need to respond, respond. Keep the cell phone away from your head. Don't yak on it all day long. Don't surf the web on it. Don't do email on your phone. And you'll be just fine. I use about 90 minutes a month at most on my cell phone using it that way. Now, I'm not a Luddite. I use GPS. You know, I use the internet, I do different things on my cell phone, but I hardly use it. And I keep it away from me when I am. It's simple things like that that are going to protect you. Now, there's another thing you can do also. You can get EMF protectors like I've got on this phone. This is actually, this phone has an Amora, and this is actually a big one. This is one for a house. This is just a bunch of nano crystals embedded in a laminate that creates a localized scalar field around this and that structures the EM field coming off of this so that it's less noisy, less chaotic, it passes through the body much more quietly and it doesn't interfere with cellular communication. What these phones do when they're not, when they're not protected that way is they create a random chaotic microwave field that interferes with cellular communication, it heats tissue, Homeopathically, it damages the structure of the water in your tissue. So it does a lot of different things and it interferes with all kinds of different energetics in your body. Electrical impulses, electrochemical impulses, sound frequencies, all kinds of stuff. It's interfering with a lot of stuff. So by putting one of these protectors on, it structures the field. It makes it less damaging, much less damaging. It doesn't give you a carte blanche to, oh, just yak on the phone for hours. Uh, but it does minimize uh, a lot of the risk. And so between that and using your phone wisely, you can continue to live in the modern era and not wind up dying prematurely or having major problems. Uh, it's more and more evidence is coming out that these phones do cause cancer. Uh, and if you think that using a wireless headset or a uh, corded um, earpiece will decrease the EMF that actually sends it deeper into the brain. So you can look on our website, you can see the evidence and information on that. So the trick with these things is just to minimize use, put a protector on. We've got protectors on our website. Uh, there are other ones on the market. Uh, we find the ones that work the best and cost the least uh, and we test them. Now another thing too, there are people on the internet who will take one of these cell phones with one of these protectors on them, get a, a meter like a tri-fill meter, turn the cell phone on, the meter you know, does what it just did, it goes off, and they say, therefore, these EMF protectors don't work. Well, they do work, but they don't block the signal of the cell phone like aluminum foil does. Obviously, if you block the signal of your cell phone, even partially, then you wouldn't get as good a reception or any reception on your cell phone, you wouldn't be able to use it. So what these EMF protectors do is they structure the microwave field coming off of it so it's less damaging. They don't eliminate it, they don't block it, because if they did block it, then it wouldn't work. So they simply structure it. That's why you won't see any change measuring the field with a regular electromagnetic meter because these measure electromagnetic radiation. They don't measure the structure of it. Okay. Now another thing that people ask me is, uh, you know, does my cell phone irradiate me when I'm not using it? You know, or can I text? Can I just text? Doesn't that use less radiation? Well, let me show you what happens when your cell phone's not even running. Okay, first of all, I'm going to turn this on and watch the meter. You can see what happens with the meter when the cell phone cranks up. It goes out and starts contacting the tower, and the moment that it does, you'll see that meter start going up. And 
even if you're not using your cell phone, what you have to understand is that these cell phones are constantly polling towers so that they know which tower is out there and which one they're in proximity to and which one they can communicate with. Um, so that as you're moving from place to place, it, you know, your cell phone can go from one tower to the next and grab the signals. So it's constantly polling um, to see what towers are out there. So even if you're not using it, it's not going to register as much as if you're talking on the phone, but texting or surfing or doing email or speaking, any of that is going to show the, uh, it's going to emit radiation. So even not using your cell phone is going to have that problem. So that's the deal with these things. If you want to, for some reason, walk around with a Faraday cage in your pocket, aluminum foil, I think, is the cheapest, easiest way to go. But the better way is just to turn your freaking cell phone off and use it wisely. Turn it on when you need it. Turn it off when you don't. Check your voicemail every now and then, even if you're a busy person. And you'll be a lot better off. So, Ken Rolla, signing out.